as I uh, get ready to plant uh, most of my gardens, I'm planting a lot of them right now. Here's one. This is in my squash bed, uh, which goes <laughs> all the way out there. That's all going to be squashed right here in between these logs. Um, there and there, I'm planting greens and then coming down here, I'm planting greens as well. But it got me thinking, as many people are planting right now, the concept of you reap what you sow is uh, something I think about. Especially in times like these where I am about to plant. I made sure my seed is good, you know, uh, most of it harvested here. But also, understanding that in life, you will reap what you sow. And I know a lot of us may not fully think about that as we reap consequences in our life. You know, it's very easy to say, I'm going to blame this person, I'm going to blame that person. It's very easy just to play victim. We like to play victim. And by playing victim, you know, it's almost like, well, the reason why my life is the way it is is because of what somebody else did to me. I realized the bad things that happened to me in my life a lot of the times were because I was simply reaping what I've sown. Shalom is following Yeshua. Welcome you under the rock. And Yeshua tells a parable of the man that sold the good seed in his field, the wheat. And then when the men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares, or as the scriptures calls it, darnel, in his field. And they didn't know that the enemy had sown darnel in their field until the blade sprung and the fruit was produced. I was telling uh, the sisters this lesson this week and showed them a picture of what tares look like and what wheat looks like and how it looks very similar. But a lot of times in our life today, we are reaping what we have sown. And then when we don't like the fruit that is coming up, we blame somebody else for the fruit that has come up. And we say, well, somebody must have come and sown darn on our fields. It's somebody else's fault. No, this is the seed that you have sown in your field. You are reaping what you have sown. The Bible says in uh, uh, Genesis, about a sheet, it says, uh, there's spring time, oh, sorry, uh, seed time and harvest. There's a time for you to sow and there's a time for you to reap what you have sown. So this life is, there is a law of reaping and sowing. My beloved brother David always talks about this. There's a the law of reaping and sowing. You will reap what you've sown. If you sow the shit, you can't get mad that you reap shit. If you sow the sin, you can't get mad that you've reaped sin. If you sow and you have not sown to preparedness, to being ready, to living as our forefathers lived, you're going to reap what befalls those that have not prepared. If you sow to this culture, you're going to reap this culture. The book of Isaiah talks about if you make Egypt your covering and want and make your way to go back to Egypt. So right now is a very good time for us to analyze our lives, you know, especially with Passover coming, especially with Passover coming. Now is a great time to examine our lives and examine through your life what you have sown in your life. Have you really sown to righteousness, right ruling, holiness, pleasing the Father, preparing your house, Men, are you really sowing for the betterment of your home? Because if not, you are going to reap those seeds. And those seeds will spring up at any time. I've planted seeds that haven't grown up, or that haven't uh, borne fruit, or even sprung up that year. They came up the next year. And that's the way seed is. You may plant it, and, you know, and that's the way sin is. You plant sin in your life and you think that it's not going to affect you because the effects aren't immediate. The effects may not take place for a year or two or three. And we know what sin is. Sin is transgression of the law. 
And if you've ever grown something like amaranth, you know that when you sow it, door and and it goes to uh, to seed, it starts bearing its fruit, and, so, and it goes back to seed. That seed gets scattered in the wind, and now you've got amaranth everywhere. That seed is going to take that. that that's, the wind's going to take that seed and scatter it, and you're going to have amaranth everywhere. Or you'll grow things like mint, or Jerusalem artichokes. And the root systems are so intricate or so vast that once you plant it, removing all the mint or removing all the artichokes is nearly impossible. May that be a consideration as people are about to get their stimulus checks. People are set to get, once again, another round. You will reap what you sow. How will you use these finances? How will you use these opportunities that you are given? Are you going to prepare? Are you going to waste it? Are you going to spend it on conveniences and luxuries? Are you going to save it? Are you going to buy land? Are you going to buy food? I wouldn't suggest buying ammo. <laughs> are you going to buy seeds? How are you going to spend these opportunities? Because you don't want to be that person that looks back later on and says, it's not fair. Because you're reaping in a year from now what you have sown today. There are people today who are reaping from so, such horrible, t terrible decisions. You know, men, you go off and lay with some hoe. No, not the hoe that <laughs> I showed in the past video. I'm talking about a literal, uh, scandalous, uh, uh, slovenly woman. You lay with the woman that the Bible says is, is, is shameless. You lay with her because she looked good or because whatever came into you or whatever you felt. And now she's pregnant and she's not of the faith and she doesn't love the father. She's not obedient to you. And now you're sowing 18 years of garnished wages and and watching, you know, what you see take place in this earth. She's taking your check or, or what you're paying. It's supposed to be for your baby. And she's buying hair. Nails. She's spending it on her new man. And what you going to do about it? You see, you sowed that seed because she looked good. But she was not good for you. And now you are reaping 18 years of consequences. Women, same thing. And, and, and the overall effect is you can't run around and say, oh, I'm a victim. Because like I've said many times before, and I fully believe in it, there were signs that we ignored as men. There are signs that we ignored. So once again, we are here. And, and, and we are given an opportunity. You know, we always ask for opportunities from the Father. We always ask, you know, if you give me one more chance, I'll get it right. And he did. His son Yeshua. The blood of Yeshua. Repentance. Turning away from our sins. What are you doing with the opportunity you have? What are you doing with repentance? Are you just saying, oh, he's got mercy on me. No, the Bible says sin is transgression of the law. So for those of you who don't acknowledge the law, this is not for you. But for those that do acknowledge the law, who keep it, guard it, live it, it's part of them. This is an opportunity for us to sow good seed. Can you imagine? I'm in the video with this. Can you imagine if Yosef, Joseph in Egypt, sowed his fields with bad seed? What would his seven years of famine look like? When you have the opportunity to sow good seed and you have the opportunity to plant good seed because the, the, the options and the opportunities are there to sow good seed in your life, you want to take that opportunity. Because just like we're seeing right now, it sure looks like the seven years of plenty, if not if they haven't already come to an end or fastly, are fastly are fast coming to an end in which those seven years of famine you're gonna you may just have to live in those seven years of famine metaphorically you may just have to live on what you have 
reaped. And that's going to be based on what you have sown. You can apply this to preparedness. You can apply this to all aspects of life. You will reap what you sow. So let's reap to righteousness and holiness. To set apart. Let's reap for the preservation of our families. The saving of our families. Preparedness. The prudent man foresees the evil. Let's sow to that. So that we may reap the fruit. In the time of harvest. Bless y'all. I'm out. Shalom.